All right, thanks for tuning in. We're going to be talking about the uh, second and third retirements. This is going to be the study for the uh, Wednesday the 16th. And originally we had scheduled on the 12th. We had a Bible review uh, on the 12th. And then, so us not meeting, we moved up the first retirement to that. And now this is the second and third retirements. We're going to study those together for Wednesday uh, 1216 and in that we'll see Jesus and his apostles going to the region of Tyre and Sidon which was uh, on the coastland of the Canaanites in the Old Testament that's where that area is and uh, also we'll see a healing of a demon possessed Gentile girl and uh, then we reach the third retirement which would be a withdrawal through Decapolis which was on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee, that would be the ten city Roman, Roman province, and there we'll see a deaf and dumb man who is healed, and then an account of many who are healed, the feeding of the four thousand, and then a, just a brief encounter uh, with the Pharisees and Sadducees who were seeking a sign. In the uh, second uh, retirement. Jesus, like we said, Jesus and his apostles are going to go to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And then they will, uh, there Jesus will heal the demon-possessed Gentile girl. That's found in Mark chapter 7, 24 through 30, and also Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. And that's where we'll be reading from Matthew 15. We'll make some notes of uh, things said in Mark also, but we'll read through first. We'll read through Matthew fifteen twenty one through 28. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Okay, we see the the scene here where Jesus and uh, had gone out uh, to Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre and Sidon was northeast of the uh, Galilee region, up in the Phoenician region, and uh, they were coast coast uh, cities, port cities. Tyre and Sidon. And uh, interesting, Mark's uh, account says that uh, very verse chapter seven, verse twenty four, said he went, entered into a house and uh, wanted no one to know it, but it. But he could not be hidden. Uh, he was so popular, even up in the Greek areas, uh, that he could. Um, he was well known. And a woman says, "Woman of Cana in Matthew." And then, but Mark's account says in chapter seven, verse twenty-six, that the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth. All right, so she came, and. Uh, her daughter was demon possessed in a severe way. It says severely, and uh, she asked for mercy. And she noticed she calls uh, Jesus the Son of David. She's acknowledging that he is the the Christ, the Savior. And uh, that's pretty. That is such a pretty powerful statement um, that a Greek woman would say that they were not. Uh, she may have been uh, familiar with uh, the Jewish and the Old Testament, but uh, Jesus points out that uh, he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was his mission. 
to preach to them. Uh, and that was the uh, pattern we see in Acts too, that the Jews were preached to first and then the Gentiles. And uh, we see that uh, that was his purpose. And uh, it's interesting, the, the disciples here really, kind of in an arrogant way, I think, wanted just to get rid of her. And, uh, you know, we might say today, she, this lady's getting on my last nerves. We might, say, we might say it that way. But she was really crying out for help. And uh, she came uh, acknowledging he was Lord and asking him for his help again. And in doing that, she was worshiping him. And he gives an illustration here that um, it wasn't good to take children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And um, interesting, she did not take offense to that. And on the surface, that might seem harsh. Or, uh, But he really wasn't, I don't think in any way, trying to... Uh, to be hateful to this woman, but he was just kind of pointing out an illustration, and she even acknowledges that's true. The illustration was true, but notice she says, but even the little dogs get get the crumbs. In Mark's account, verse 28, it said they, they even the little dogs can eat crumbs from the children's table, so that would be like a step down from the master's table, even to the children's table, they still would get, you know, a little, a little something, and that's really what she was begging for—just, uh, just a little something, which was huge in her world. But just to, for Jesus, just to help her in this occasion, and all of his healings probably would be, you know, a small event overall, but to her it was huge, and she, she knew he had the power and the mercy and the love and compassion that he could do this. And she also knew he was the Savior, the Christ. And uh, so he granted it to her based on her faith. Great is your faith. And so her daughter was healed. And Mark's account says, verse 30, in chapter 7, when she came to her house, she found the demon was gone and her daughter was lying on the bed. And that that was a great comfort. Um, remember, I just want to, and I just want to say this, that this, this really was, it does seem harsh, this comment from Jesus, but he really didn't mean it like that. He was sent to uh, the Jewish nation, and through the Jewish nation he came. And, um, and it was supposed to be for their glory, that the Savior of the world for Jews and then Gentiles would come through the Jewish nation. Okay, that would be the uh, wrap-up of the uh, second retirement. The third retirement is through Decapolis. So he would leave Tyre and Sidon and come back down heading uh, southeast this time instead of northwest. I may have said that that Tyre and Sidon was northeast, but it was really northwest of Galilee. But he headed southeast, headed back through uh, Galilee and around the Sea of Galilee over to the Decapolis area for this. This would be the ten-city Roman province. And uh, we'll see here he heals a deaf and dumb man, someone who couldn't hear or speak, and then we'll read an account in Matthew where many are healed, feeding of the 4,000, and then we'll see a brief encounter with the Pharisees and Sadducees who were, uh, remember they were trying to get uh, get some arguments started with Jesus for, uh, the, you know, they're plotting his death, trying to find fault with him. All right, let's read about the deaf and dumb man who was healed. And uh, we'll read Mark's account, Mark 7, 31 through 37. Again, departing from the region 
of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. And then he brought, then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, an impediment in his speech. And they, began, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers on, on his ears and spat and, and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plainly. And then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He's done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. All right, here we see a man who's brought to Jesus, and uh, he, can't, he can't hear or, and he can't speak. And uh, Jesus heals this man. He he uh, says, be opened. And, of course, that would be his ears to be opened so he could hear. And then his tongue opened or loosed. It was restrained from, kept him from speaking. And uh, immediately that was, and that was wildly, widely proclaimed. And uh, even though Jesus now is trying to, I guess, take a little break from the crowds, um, uh, in these retirement sessions, that he still has compassion and love for his creation, and uh, we see him telling them, "Don't, don't tell anybody," but they just had to go and tell it, which would be, I think, typical because that's just such an amazing thing, and and the people were just uh, astonished of what a great, great work this is. All right, and over in Matthew chapter 15, we have an account of uh, many people who were who were healed. Um, he left the capitalists and went around the Sea of Galilee. Let's read Matthew 15, 29 through 31. Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain and sat there. And then the great multitudes came to him. Uh, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and up many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, and the maimed made whole, and the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. So while we see Jesus here trying to have some uh, some time alone, some rest time, the multitudes are still seeking him out at this time, even though he's had some to go to go away. He's still having the sick and, and those brought to him. And these have various, uh, various issues in life. Those who are lamed and uh, blind, mute, maimed. I think the maimed is more of a deformation that uh, people had, maybe, and that they were healed of that. And... Uh, and the multitude just, you know, glorified God in, uh, in this power through Jesus' uh, power and love and mercy upon these people. All right, next we see the feeding of the 4,000. This is another account of a great, uh, great compassion and uh, love for his people and uh, trying to take care of their needs. Not that his uh, purpose was taking care of physical needs, because he was the, his kingdom was spiritual kingdom, and as he said, he was the uh, the bread of life, as we studied in in John chapter six. And but this is another time where he had compassion on uh, four thousand of uh, of the men, not counting the women and children. But this is found in Mark's eight. Uh, chapter verses 1 through 9 and then also Matthew 15 32 through 39 
And we're going to read Mark's account of this. Uh, Mark 8, 1 through 9. In those days, the multitude being very uh, great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to, to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they uh, have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come afar. And he said to his disciples, answered, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And so he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break, broke them and gave them to the disciples and set before them. And they set them before the multitude. And they also had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he set them also before them. And so they were ate and were filled. And they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who'd eaten were about 4,000. And uh, he sent them away and immediately got in the boat and uh, went to the region of uh, Dalmanuatha. All right, we see this scene that uh, multitude has uh, gathered again, a really large group of people, just the men numbering 4,000, not including the women and children. I believe that's what Matthew's account had said. And uh, Jesus has compassion on them again because they had been, for three days, been uh, with him, listening to his teaching. And I'm sure he's uh, healing some too. But um, it's interesting. His disciples again ask about how we're going to feed all these people, much like they did in the 5,000. Um, but again... He, uh, out of this time, he has a few fish and seven loaves, and they feed the 4,000 and took up seven large baskets, it said. And uh, out of his love and compassion, he took care of these, these people's needs. Uh, three days without food is a long time for, uh, for people to, but they were very, to go without eating, but they were very uh, in tune to, to being with Jesus and hearing his teaching and and also being healed, I'm sure. Um, so we see in the past that while some, many left, there were still a big, big crowds that were following him. And we see Jesus uh, at the end of this scene, he's going to get into a boat with his disciples. And uh, they are going away having to you know take a rest uh, to get away from the crowds and um, Jesus is um, going to have a encounter with the Sadducees and Pharisees this is found in um, Matthew 15 39 all the way through uh, chapter 16 verse 4 and then a shorter account in uh, Mark 8, uh, verses 10 through 12 there. And we're going to read Matthew uh, chapter 15's account. And, uh, and he sent away the multitude and got into the boat and came to the region of Magdala. And uh, the, then the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and testing him that he should show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. All right, we see Jesus here uh, going back across the Sea of Galilee to the eastern side, which would be the uh, realm where uh, Dalmanutha is, or Mag Magadan, or Magdala. It was all kind of the same 
area, but it was on the eastern, I mean, excuse me, the western side. It was on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. They had just left the eastern side. And uh, so we see the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming. And uh, it's interesting now, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't necessarily agree. They didn't agree at all on uh, on some issues. Uh, they were kind of sects or divisions in the Jewish uh, faith. And uh, But here they're working together. They came together and they're going to try to test Jesus. And uh, we've seen this uh, work we read in, in uh, John chapter 6 that uh, the people wanted a sign. And that's what... Uh, that's why they came to uh, to see Jesus. Well, what is this sign you're showing us? Well, they had every sign they could have wanted if they would have wanted it, is, which is the key here. Uh, they did not want to acknowledge that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was going to be the Christ. And uh, he calls them out on this. He uh, gives an example about the how they look at the sky and uh, and can call the weather a uh, red sky in the evening meant it would be you know fair weather but in the morning it was going to be rough days and uh, they he said they could they could tell what the weather was going to be like but they couldn't see the discern the signs of the times and otherwise all the other words all the things that's been going on you you just don't get it because they just didn't want to a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign but no sign would be given except the sign of the prophet jonah which he is referring to his death and resurrection remember jonah was in the belly of of the great fish three days and three nights and then also Jesus would be in the tomb three days and three nights and would be resurrected and that was the sign that that would uh, would be to these people who are seeking a sign and that was uh, going to also be what was preached to them uh, on the day of Pentecost all right. Thank you uh, for tuning in now of our study for second, uh, the second and third retirement. And uh, here we see Jesus and his disciples going up to Tyre and Sidon and healing of a demon-possessed Gentile girl. And then we you know the third retirement. We saw the, the deaf and the dumb man uh, healed. Many others who were healed who had various ailments and conditions. And then the feeding of the 4,000 and then this uh, encounter of uh, arguments with the Pharisees and Sadducees. All right, next study will be the fourth and uh, the fourth retirement, I believe. And uh, appreciate you tuning in and let's all continue to pray for one another's uh, good health and improvement of health. And let's keep... Uh, Keep everyone that we know of who is sick with the COVID virus uh, in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you so much.